I am Bishesh Khanal. I'm a postdoctoral research associate at uh, King's College London and Imperial College London in the UK, and I'm also uh, with uh, NAMI here in Nepal. Uh, similarly, we have Azad Satkuli, uh, who is actually my classmate in undergraduate here at uh, Pulsok, Pulsok Campus in Engineering, and uh, he's doing postdoctoral research in ETH Zurich in uh, Computer Vision Lab uh, with Luke Van Gul, who is quite well known in the world in the field of computer vision. So let us start with uh, artificial intelligence. When we talk about artificial intelligence, I think we have to get back and first think, talk about human intelligence because that's the reference point from which we are saying uh, artificial intelligence, right? And when we think of intelligence, there are different uh, aspects of it where the senses, uh, uh, we, we sense things and then we, we think about those things. And from the very low level sensing of smell, touch, hearing, balancing acts which many animals can do and then we slowly move towards higher level functions of language, vision, uh, imagination, thinking and consciousness. Well, we don't exactly know what consciousness is and there's debate and people trying to work out what that is. But human brain, it's 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 pretty amazing. Right? It's it's amazing thing that nature has given us and uh, people have been fantasizing or about imagining can we emulate can we make things on our own that looks like these human brims not look like but can work like human beings and that's more than artificial intelligence these days people would like to tell artificial general intelligence intelligence that means having this wide aspect of intelligence that humans uh, are capable of uh, that's it's, and then from there, when we talk about artificial intelligence, the way I l would like to put it, especially the way this term has been used around the world right now, and big hype buzzword, right? It's, it's more about the ability of man-made agents, so artificial is intrinsically something that humans make, and that can do tasks which are traditionally thought, to, uh, we attribute it to some forms of intelligence when you talk about intelligence. So let's let's try to see some examples. Well, what does it mean? So on the top left, we see I was just typing in Nepali some words and Google says, oh, this is, it detects it's Nepali and then it translates it into something which I hope will be the feeling throughout the 10 days for you, right? And uh, uh, so that's the translation it is. So that's one part of intelligence, translating languages, uh, right? And uh, similarly, when we go here, bottom left, what we see is an autonomous driving uh, with uh, detections, aut automatic detections of cars, objects, lanes, and uh, actually it's, it goes with beyond what humans is perhaps capable of in detecting m the distances, measuring these computers are quite good in this quantifying stuff, which we're not so good at, right? So it's, it could actually even be, we can think of augmented intelligence, super intelligence, uh, there's, there's all sorts of things we own. On the right, what you see here is the ultrasound image of a fetus. Uh, it's not easy to see even for us. So they trained experts in uh, fetal ultrasound, so they can, there's, there's a fetus with a head and there's a, an algorithm that tries to detect abdomen, uh, and what, whatever reason you are at a given point of time. That's again another forms of, uh, form of intelligence. And we also have in the middle uh, something that we traditionally don't link uh, with uh, human intelligence. It's predicting from data uh, from the computer. In the Facebook, when you open your Facebook, you get these ads and this comes from certain, uh, certain forms of intelligent uh, algorithms that tries to predict what would be the best thing to show you, right? So this kind of stuff. So these these are different uh, instances of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, some forms of machine learning, and there's all sorts of terms that we will be looking into in the coming days uh, in lectures. Uh, what we will focus on today is on the vision part, where it's not just about eye when we see, when we, we, will, we take it for granted, right? Seeing things, uh, it's, it's from eye, but actually a lot of this human reason is going on in the human brain, right? And uh, it's, there's an interesting anecdotal uh, story uh, in the 60s, I think it's the late 60s in, uh, at MIT in the uh, computer science and artificial intelligence laboratory, as I think uh, the, the well-known he said, well-known scientists during that time, they thought, okay, let's solve this problem of object detection, recognizing objects by developing a system of programs. Uh, 
should be, and let's give it to summer students, interns. They should be able to do, do, do that in, during the summer. And pattern recognition, recognizing objects, right? That was the problem they wanted to solve well, with their summer students. But it's still an open problem. It's a half a century right now, and still we haven't solved this problem. So it's, it, this shows us how much we underestimated, how much even the scientists took it for granted, this capacity we have to uh, see things when we see people, I've seen some faces, and I'm starting to recognize few of you now, right? So this giving this to computers, to these algorithms, when you take photos, it's, it's not an easy problem. It's, it's quite challenging, and we will see some of the tools and techniques we need to do that. And how do we learn to see? If you go, 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 go back to this problem, if we can think of babies, right? This, the babies, when, they, when they're, they're born into this world, they, they, starts, they start really feeding data. So they, they, they hear, they touch, they explore the world, they see things, right? As, in, as they grow, as their brains start growing, it's, it's, there's this integral part of what the faith releases as data, learning, and knowledge as the three pillars of AI. That's the data part where we l get lots of things into our head, uh, then touching, exploring, trying to learn things. And we build knowledge out of that. And we start having models of the, this world. How does the world work? Oh, this is 3D. I can imagine what this chair looks like on the other side. I can imagine things when I, I'm going out, even if I, before going out, I know what it should look like. So these are, imagine this building up of priors about the world that we are into, we're born into. And this, this is data, learning, and knowledge. So three, three key elements of intelligence as we see. And in each of these, the linear algebra, which is a part of mathematics, is quite important. Processing data, when we get these data from cameras, be it speech, uh, recorded speech, uh, what I'm speaking is being recorded, so these things, uh, this these data needs to be processed before we can use learning algorithms. Uh, and here, the, this, lots of these tools from linear algebra will need to be used. Similarly, in learning, lots of how do we learn, how do we infer things once we have processed data. In these learning, also, we, we we need this linear algebra and same about the knowledge. So this, that's why we will be focusing, we're trying to give some fundamentals on linear algebra that we need by showing examples of computer vision as well. And uh, so as we live in this 3D world, but when we take images, when we take images, what we have uh, is a 2D image because the 3D images get projected uh, gets projected into a 2D plane from the image. And what, what computers have, usually by normal cameras that we use, is 2D images, right? And uh, so there's a few example images of a city. Some of you might recognize it. As soon as if you recognize the city, you, in your head, there's this 3D model that automatically comes up of this place. But for computers, even if you give thousands of these 2D images, how, how do we make this 3D model how do you build this capacity? Right, so this is this is a technique, and here, Jurik, uh, this is uh, part of the work. I think Azad and some other people are working in their labs to build a whole model, 3D model of the city in Zurich from just 2D images. That's thousands of images that has been taken across the web. Right, and once you have this 3D model, there's lots of information, data now in the computer, uh, and. We will see how linear algebra will be used uh, for these sorts of problems as well. Similarly, is mixed reality, virtual reality. Once again, here you see an example of laparoscopic surgery where Azad was working in, when he was in France, I think, where you, a surgeon is trying to do a surgery and you project uh, do this augmented reality to detect certain parts of the, uh, of, the, of the organ and then you help surgeons to focus on that part of the organ with the certain things. And there are lots of magic leap. You, some of you might have heard about it. It's creating a lot of buzzword, although we still are waiting to see results on how that pans out uh, in the future. And there's lots of tons of applications into that. And how do we do those sorts of things? Right, so this, the basics, uh, building this 3D model again in the part of a Rome uh, in Italy. Uh, these are the stuffs that we will look into. Uh, two days, and uh, I think the lectures in two days again, right? Today and in two days' time. So linear algebra. Now we will go 
into a bit more into formulas, and uh, I think uh, it might be useful if you have notebook and pen also with you. Sometimes we might have some little exercises to be done later on uh, during the course. Uh, 